Hello everybody and welcome back. And before today's video, I want you to take a couple of deep breaths. So breathe in and breathe out. Breathe in and breathe out. It's pretty important, you know, take a couple of nice deep breaths because, well, today's video is going to go to some really interesting places. So the embargo is going to get lifted right about now. And the thing that I'm going to be talking to you about today, ready for this, is the Paragon system, or what Wargaming currently wants to call the Naval Training Center. So what is it? Well, the Naval Training Center is going to be something that's going to be implemented uh, as of the moment, patch 8.7. So currently we're 8.5, so about two patches away. And what you're going to be able to do is strengthen individual ships further. And so what they're going to have you do is revisit some of the older ships that you haven't touched in a while now that you've gotten to tier 10. So this is mostly targeted at veteran players who have been in this game for quite a number of years, have got multiple tier 10 lines, and maybe don't have that much motivation to go back down and play the lower tier stuff and everything this is sort of wargaming's big solution yeah they're going to make you regrind your lines for the purposes of getting stronger ships if you're sitting there right now and you've just heard this much and you're going holy crap you're not alone <laughs> how this whole thing is going to work is you're going to be able to upgrade three levels for all of your ships above tier six. That includes your premium ships, that includes your tech tree ships. And these upgrades, uh, you know, you're going to have to work for them. They're going to take a lot of time as they've explained it to us. And I'll explain to you how you're going to be able to get these things. But anyways, how you do the upgrades is essentially you have to uh, acquire like this national experience uh, some of it can also be used with free experience there's some of the stuff that's not 100 percent fully clear and it could just have been a language issue but yeah so you're going to be spending this sort of national experience that you're going to be accumulating on upgrading your ships and as of the moment uh, the ones that they've talked to us about are battleships cruisers and destroyers as obviously with the state of the carriers we're not dealing with carriers right yeah, um, <laughs> yeah. you guys thought this was going to be like a CVAA video. No, no, no. I can save that for tomorrow because this is far more significant, right? Anyways, you can spend this new national experience and even some of your own free experience, and you're going to be able to essentially get upgraded versions of ships. <sighs> okay. Anyways, going on. So how you earn this national experience is essentially you have to forget your entire line and regrind the whole darn thing. Now, obviously, they're going to put limits. So every season, apparently, you can only regrind like three separate lines. At least that's how it was explained to us. And so every season, you can choose three lines that you want to regrind, you finish regrinding the whole line. And the minute you finish your first regrind, you essentially will be able to acquire, I think, the tier one upgrade. Now, do keep in mind that when they were doing this presentation with us, they were like, the numbers are not final. You know, there's going to be adjustments or alterations or whatever to the final values. But just the idea that they even thought about this kind of thing is alarming. Let's use that word. <laughs> it's, it's alarming because, like, when I look at this, I just see nothing but problems. I see balance issues. I see veteran players being able to turn around and, you know, especially the ones who play a lot to be able to basically club sort of the beginner players. And you'll, you'll sort of see Wargaming's response to that later as well in, that, in, in how in their minds they think that uh, this is going to balance out. You know, we'll get to it. But anyways, so that's how the system works for now. You forget the entire line. You regrind through the line, you acquire this national experience that you can invest into getting upgrades. So, like I sort of explained earlier, the reason they want to do this is because 
a lot of the veteran players who've been around for a long time, you know, they're maybe just not having that much more to do. And they want the veteran players to re-experience progression. And since they didn't want to go like full tier 11 plus, because that would bring about a whole bunch more, I guess, balancing nightmares from their perspective, although I'm not so sure how this doesn't create the same problem, but anyways, okay. Yeah. Um. Anyways. Um. <laughs> so their train of thought is um, that this whole sort of snowflake thing, if you guys remember the snowflakes event, that worked really well as a way to get people to like sort of replay old ships. So they thought might as well take that and supersize it, right? And also during the CV rework, there were people who like forgot entire branches and then were grinding other branches. Yeah. Um, so that's how all these things, I guess, came together for them to come up with this Paragon system. No matter how I look at it, you know, this is more of a PvE game, kind of like a thing you would see in Diablo 3 where, you know, PvP isn't really an issue. So, like, who cares about balance? You know, your character can get a little stronger, no big deal. But, like, for a PvP game, I just, I just can't see it, I guess. I just cannot see how the balance issue really can be resolved. But, you know, Wargaming's approach when we kind of mentioned it was, ah, you know, one of the ways we're going to sort of compress the difference between the veteran players and the new players is we're just going to give everybody the free premium consumables. Like, there's no more free consumables, just like the current premium will become the only consumable and it'll be free. And so, like, we'll give the newbie players, non-experienced players, the first grind through players, we'll give them a consumable upgrade. And that is somehow supposed to compensate the difference to the buffs that you're going to give the veteran. Like, oh my god. <sighs> okay. Yeah. So that's basically the balancing thing that they're saying that like here we compress the difference between the veterans and the the not so good players and then over on this side will allow veteran players to regrind their lines for more epic buffs. Yeah, that's totally going to be the solution. So, uh, yeah, obviously additional concerns is like, okay, you know, what about the speed of grinding and all that? So they're saying that there's going to be like certain limits, right? One of the explanations that they gave me later on was for you to be able to get up to the maximum tier upgrades will take you six total regrinds of the line. Uh, so the first one will take only, the first tier upgrade will only take one regrind, the second tier upgrade will take three regrinds in total, and then the third tier upgrade will take six regrinds in total. But then again, when you sort of see what they were proposing for just the buffs alone, even the first tier upgrade by itself, I mean, forget the second tier upgrade, I mean, the second tier upgrade is going to be massive, but just the first tier alone is already going to, I think, in my opinion, create a pretty sizable gap. Like, imagine you were a new player, and you finally get up to your shiny tier 10, and then, like, that veteran player over there who's done this one regrind, well, his ship is just, like, outright better than yours. Like, forget about the skill difference, his ship is just outright better than yours. Also, the system is not affecting CVs yet, but uh, because CVs are still, like, sort of, you know, something that they haven't fully fixed yet. Right, so what I'm going to do now is I'm going to um, put the section up where they present what kind of upgrade buffs is going to happen. I'm going to show you guys the Q&A that happened um, with myself and the other CCs, and hopefully you'll get a feeling of what this Paragon system is going to do gameplay-wise. Um, but yeah, I will talk to you guys when that section is done. About BB was 15% HP, uh, A was 10% HP, and so a good time, or other time, it's kind of upgrade. 
Plus one upgrade. Plus one upgrade. And for DD, uh, it will be plus ten percent HP. Uh, decrease. Uh, decrease. Uh, rather, uh, repair. Ah. Boost uh, in repairing rather and then giant and giant and something uh, like this. Yeah, cruiser. Uh, the question was uh, where are battle cruisers? Battle cruisers are cruisers according to the icon. The second one I already can't remember, so uh, we, it's additional model. It's uh, we uh, we really set all uh, bonuses that you can get from upgrades from cards and choose about. Uh, from one third to one half of these bonuses and uh, move them uh, among this feature. It's just uh, about uh, part of your additional upgrades and perks set. Of course. <laughs> yes, thank you. <laughs> thank you very much. Uh, Oh, I don't know. Alex. Yeah, it's your own ability, it's a tag ability. Uh, how to say it, ellipsize? Ellipsize is understandable for me. Dispersion. No, it's not dispersion. It's not sigma. It's not sigma. It's ellipsis. It's physical. We have uh, minus this problem. Okay, thank you. Okay. Because this person for me is kind of sigma, but it's not about sigma. It's about uh, the reason of uh, this ellipsis. Minus this problem. Okay, thank you. Uh, it's bigger than the some grids. Uh, and uh, boost for uh, for secondary. <laughs> <laughs> no. <laughs> you think that it's too huge? Oh, well, we <laughs> uh, there is a cooldown. About 10% cooldown. Uh, yes, of course. Uh, uh, for both torpedoes and, uh, and artillery. And the third one is kind of survivability for battleships and cruisers and attack ability for destroyers because they have not enough attack ability. It's about uh, minus 5 or 10 percent to consumables. Reload. Uh, reload. Uh, and uh, Probably kind of. Uh, yes, yes, yes. Boost the jack of all trades. It can be 5 or 10 person within the side. Every numbers can be really moved uh, on each side. I guess in decreasing. Mm. Here is. 
here is consumables again. And plus one uh, all consumables. Keep the down. And then, 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 then. Uh, here is where all uh, torpedo damage. Plus 10 percent. Kind of this, and I don't know, can be sure. I don't know how it can be. About 10 percent, probably uh, something. Uh, uh, this, this, uh, yes. Yes. Uh, take the microphone. So can you please explain to us these t three tiers of upgrades? You said they will stack. You yes. will have all of this. Yes. No As further questions. <laughs> As we say, it's about one half of your boost from your models, from your consumables, from your uh, perks, and from your upgrades. It's really less than all these things, uh, about three times. Okay, I probably had the same question if the bonuses are stackable, so they are stackable, as I understand. But, uh, you know, you give bonus, 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 but you don't have, uh, give any minus. Yes, yeah. because it's, it's pure boost. It's designed as pure you know, boost, uh, not, uh, not uh, decreasing anything. Yes. Well, uh, I would understand, uh, so uh, let's say you have legendary, uh, legendary module. Yeah? You, you get some plus, let's say, on a rate of fire. But uh, you have a lo uh, lower turret traverse. Yes, legendary upgrades are trade-offs. Here is not trade-offs. It's a pure boost. Just, just you are just boosting. Yes, yeah? yes, yes. Wow, pleasure. I, w I would expect, uh, let's say, boost something. Uh, let's say you pick up fifteen percent HP plus, but you will be, let's say, slower. Uh, you s stack an, an another maximal dispersion, but your reload will uh, say uh, be slower. By five or ten percent, yeah. J just just to make uh, some kind of combination uh, of uh, or customization of your ship, yeah, because it will be plus plus plus. Yes, because it's not about customization of your ship. You can customize your ship with your consumables, with your perks, with your uh, upgrades, with uh, uh, with uh, battle uh, battle signals, etc., etc. This is not about customization. Customization. It's just about Get your customi already customized ship and get a boost variant of this ship. Mm -hmm. Okay. Uh, guys, if you're okay with what's happening and you want to get lunch, go for it. Just, just saying. <laughs> uh, <yeah>. uh, <laughs> okay. Um, first of all, just wow. Um, <laughs> uh, last night I had the first experience ever with like Russian vodka. I think tonight I need another one after this because my mind can't handle this right now. But I have one question. We already have sort of this problem where you have sort of older experienced players who are able to club the living shit out of the newer players. <laughs> and you guys have done things in the past to say, okay, guys, don't club the, the, the newer players. Now you want to give us a bigger club. <laughs> I just, I can't do this anymore. Like, why, why do this? This is my question. Like, why even start thinking in this kind of direction is the way to go to create an even easier way for us, you know, having been sort of experienced players, to Go ahead and abuse the players who are just playing through the tech tree line the first time around. Uh, first of all, uh, we decrease this effect that you mentioned because we uh, cancel permanent consumables. Uh, we get a lot of information and statistics and uh, according to this, players just uh, without that consumables already get incredible uh, opposite to bonus negative effect. And all this negative effect, it's bigger than all these boosts all together, stuck all together. So on, after a while, then we'll get uh, several people who already have three 
uh, level of the system graded ship, upgraded ships. Uh, the difference between uh, this, I don't know, third tier destroyer and uh, destroyer with or without premium consumables, with consumables, this difference is bigger. So on, we decrease this gap with releasing both these features. This gap is already huge. We make a huge uh, decrease in this gap with consumables and uh, re and uh, revert part of this huge decrease with these bonuses. Yeah. So it will happen, but like at some more far away point in the future, while what Andre says about and we're shortening the gap with premium consumables, it gives immediate effect. And but like probably by the time you have plus three ships, the seal you want to club already like having plus one and working on plus two as well. That was actually going to be my question is how long do you estimate until the first players will be reaching level long. three captains? Long? Long. <laughs> well, even if it will take a lot of time, I still don't uh, get an idea or why to uh, do this uh, thing. Yeah, because uh, if I want to play something uh, on torpedoes, I will go for Shima. If I want to play something uh, with smoke, I go for gearing. Okay, uh, it's another uh, different, uh, let's say, a game playing uh, game style. Yeah, but if you give uh, the, the same bonuses for the same ships, what's the purpose? Yeah, I was thinking, uh, let's say, uh, let the uh, player choose how would uh, he like to customize his ship. Yeah, because you give the same things uh, to uh, all the kind of ships. Yeah, for example, let's say I would like to play uh, gearing much uh, more on torpedoes or whatever. I pick up the module, but I won't get the bonus uh, from uh, reload. Yeah, so I would expect that you get the opportunity you get 15% uh, get HP, but you get some uh, minus. Yeah, they, the like, I know if Andre said this before, but the thing is why the bonuses are broad and just blanket is exactly because what you're describing. So after, even if you, after you've got your Shima to plus three, let's say, it doesn't become Khabarovsk. So it's not like becoming an artillery monster. It has uh, expected performance, expected like uniqueness in its play style that is both known you to you and the guy who is playing in like against you. And uh, like if you are, if we allow like to, uh, I know, customize Shima into Grozovoy, into Khabarovsk, or into like Yu Yang. Why do we even need different ships then? It be, they all become kind of same. Okay, but I don't get the point. Uh, I have uh, two players. One Unicum in Montana, second one is Potato in Montana. Yeah, Probably the uh, Unicum uh, will have additional bonus with this. Uh, he will uh, get, let's say, free upgrades. The second one will have any upgrade. What's the purpose, the reason to give me additional bonus against anyone that uh, didn't have enough time or patience to get such bonus. I want to, if I play uh, against uh, another player, he has the same opportunity uh, with the ship as I. So it depends on my uh, game playing style or my experience. But if I get, let's say, additional bonus yeah, based on the time I spend on the game, I don't think it's okay. But it's already there, everywhere. Like, uh, we already have this with Commander. Like, you have 19-point Commander in Montana, the guy in, against you has 0-point Commander in Montana. And, oh my god, the difference between you two. Okay. It's not even comparable to what we're showing here. Like, all these superintendents, minus 10% invisibility, like, all those, like, one less fire, uh, everything. And then, maybe this guy also doesn't have enough silver for modernizations, and probably will help this problem a bit by removing consumables. And you have all them, and you have minus 10% extra oh. visibility, and he's like, uh, and he's like, he has no chances. Okay, and you're Unicom on top. Okay, but you are making the gap even bigger. No. No? no but, that, but that's kind of what Andre tried to describe. That first thing, we're evening it out from the other end by removing consumables, which actually makes gap significantly lower. And second, since it's, it's not like really gapped by skill or by money or a lot by, by anything specific. It's just about grind. So the guy that... So actually, like, if you think about it, like, if the guy can't afford, like, 
can afford, I don't know, premium time to constantly play on premium consumables, he's constantly at disadvantage. Uh, always. Here, he can just, in a bit slower pace, grind to those bonuses, so by the time you get to plus three, he already has plus one, and he also has free premium consumables on top, so the gap is actually lower. But answering your question on why, uh, as I mentioned in my yesterday presentation, on why, I mean, the, what's the behind, what the main, re one of the main reasons behind this feature is to stay you, Unicum player, who've got all of your tier 10s, or all of your favorite ships in the game, might be not tier 10, to, to, to give you more thing to grind for, to keep you in the game, actually to give you more goals within the game. And the other reason is that we already have 300 ships plus in the game that have relatively unique playstyles, at least some of them have uh, significantly uh, di more different playstyles than others. And everybody, literally everybody in the player base anyway has their favorite ship with their favorite uh, gameplay and they have a fantasy of making that ship stronger. That's literally the psychological reason behind the feature. Do you think you're going to be able to balance 300 ships with such generalized upgrades? You're literally giving tier 2 American the same upgrade that you're giving to IGN tier 10 or tier 7? Yes. How? How is that going Just to... Just percentage bonus to, every, to everything. You genuinely believe that such a boost to everything is not going to throw majority of the ships out of balance? If there will be exception, we will fix them. But I think that there will not be a lot of exceptions. There will be uh, a comparatively good uh, amount of bonus for each ship in the game. I draw a small picture. This is current world which we have. Uh, skilled players and the fresh player. Uh, in uh, after release of this future and after uh, removing uh, free consumables, uh, new buy will uh, already have a very huge jump, and this gap between these two guys will be less uh, be between new new buy and new extremely boosted players according to this feature. It's what I, what I want to say. We measure this gap and we take care to decrease this gap because this feature provides us the ability to give this gap. Just one quick question regarding this, the grind, like disregard the upgrades right now. Are the grinds going to be exactly identical? Like if the Pensacola needs 50,000 and 500 experience once I forget the entire line. Yes, yes. Exactly the same. Exactly and the same modules and upgrades yes, and everything. Yes, yes. Uh, I think a lot of us are thinking that every one of our ships is going to be level 3 and this is going to be a, pretty, be a be decent little grind. Do we have an idea, obviously it's going to be in seasons, um, do we have an idea of how many maybe yearly points we're going to be able to unlock? Um, I, I think a lot of people here are like, oh man, all my ships are going to be level 3 and I'm going to just shit on people that have not the upgraded captains. About time? Uh, asking about time? Of, yeah, so uh, like one of the seasons was we can get probably uh, three levels to put on whatever ships we want. How many would we get in a year? We have probably? no final uh, numbers yet, of course. Uh, I think it's in uh, work in progress. Uh, but uh, we don't want to rush the, with this system and we expect that... Uh, it will be very slowly depending uh, ships, uh, and uh, we can't imagine that uh, we will get uh, um, at more than several uh, players with three, uh, three times upgraded ships in a whole, I don't know, half or one year. It will be very very slow pace of developing on this feature and getting this, uh, this uh, resource, this experience and upgrade ships. We don't want to rush anything. So, uh, yeah, I can understand that basically why you want to do this, but I, my question is uh, like, okay, <laughs> my question is that uh, like for each kind of the upgrade, do you offer options so it's like if for example i choose to upgrade my hull so i can only choose to pass my hp or i can choose like pass my armor 
Oh, I can choose to plus my torpedo protection. Uh, you're asking why here is just boost, uh, but no option. Options about uh, in what? I didn't understand. In upgrade, it is special. Uh, no, we don't want to get options because uh, we have a lot of um, options to customize a ship in all other features in game. And increasing the customizability, I don't know if this world exists, um, we'll, uh, get, we'll get to the bad point. Then you can build each ship from any another ship. We don't want to allow to build Karabars from Karagumo, etc., etc. We want to stay our each ship with its soul, with its gameplay, with its, uh, with its character, I don't know. So on here is only pure boost without choosing to allow build your own ship from your uh, choosing ten tier or not ten tier probably it can be Fusa your favorite Fusa uh, build uh, uh, your customized build from your ship and pure boost this ship this uh, build uh, and avoid uh, these options. Bonuses allows us to actually balance this stuff. If we have multiple sets of bonuses, then it becomes progressively more difficult to balance this correctly. So for the beginning, we for sure want to stick with this. If this feature is super successful in the long term, we may think about additional ones. And there you have it, the new Paragon system. Oh my god. Um Yeah, this, this this system, this whole thing, man, this just this just makes me go, oh my lord. Um Okay, what are my problems with the system? Like let me just I guess you know, spit out my thoughts. Um the balance at you know, whatever oh, I mean six to ten, the balance gets thrown off. Like I, I don't see possibility of balance being done better. Um, you know, with this, some ships that are currently on like so the razor edge of balancing. Can you imagine with some of those friggin' bonuses? I mean, can you imagine Stalingrad with the level two bonus, like ten percent more HP, better rudder shift, and then you get fifteen percent bonus to dispersion? As if Stalingrad honestly is not accurate enough, right? Um, okay. Furthermore, as I sort of asked during the actual Q and A portion of it. This is giving the veteran players and the people who play a lot a bigger freaking club. That's it. It's like you're a veteran player and you know what you're doing already. Here's an even larger club for you to club that new guy who just joined the game who's just grinding his first way through the lines, right? Because that new guy who's playing the very, very first time all the way up to tier 10 and assuming that the new guy maybe, you know, has... Uh, maybe only a premium account, you know, he's not going to grind as fast, you know, he's worked so hard, he finally gets up to tier 10, and then he runs into an experienced player who has just an insurmountable advantage on him, the end, because that guy's ship is just like 15% tougher than yours, like, holy moly, um, I mean, I did the math, right, I did the math, if just talking tier 1 upgrades, assuming that we're just both playing Conquerors, a 15% bonus to my HP means that if you count all of my heals, I have something like a 36,000 HP advantage on the guy who doesn't have it. Like, there goes my mind, right? Like, Jesus Christ. Um, oh my god. I, I just cannot... I cannot bring myself around to saying that this is a good idea, because just there's everything about this just screams... This is meant for a PvE RPG game, and it doesn't belong in a PvP game like World of Warships, but... Bliat comrades, this is... Oh my god. Anyways, okay, I guess I'm just gonna be like, let me know what you all think in the comment section below. <laughs> oh... I just, I just need a break from the craziness. Like, we, j we haven't even solved... CV and AA, and we're gonna get this, and it's like, ugh. like wargaming. You guys need to just like, like stop with the madness. Just give us six months of a relatively stable game, 
and and just give us that because we can't as a game i think sustain these like multiple things that just constantly come in and like screw balance up just please please oh my lord please um uh i'm glad i went to church when i was in russia right so i could plead with god uh <laughs> just just like rethink this please i, I beg of you because i just don't see this as being a good addition to the game because oh my lord um i i just don't see how you guys are ever going to balance it ever um and i don't think i'm alone in that um because when i was at the summit and i was talking to some of the other cc's like this is the one thing this was like the one presentation that i think caused all of us to go just like what the actual you know like all of us so please if you guys are ever listening to this like sit down and like rethink this because this is not going to be good for the game Anyways, um, yeah, like I said earlier, guys, leave me your thoughts in the comment section below. Aside from all that, take care of yourselves. Have a great day, and I'll talk to all of you again soon. Mm -hmm.